So a new scientific paper is released called Tree of Thoughts, Deliberate Problem Solving with Large Language Models. It's by researchers at Princeton University and Google DeepMind. Now, you may have heard that saying, we only use 10% of our brain. Now, whether or not that's true, this paper seems to show that it is true for our current AI models. This new approach took ChatGPT's ability to solve complex problems from 4% to 74%. That's just from a new way of prompting it called Tree of Thoughts, or TOT, as it's referenced in the paper. The paper even comes with a warning. TOT is a framework that empowers LMs to more autonomously and intelligently make decisions and solve problems. While current tasks are limited to reasoning and search problems, future applications involving interaction with external environments or humans could bring potential danger, e.g. facilitating harmful uses of LMs. In a nutshell, this approach seems to be a hack to overclock these LMs to produce more intelligence. But let's cut to the chase. What is this tree of thoughts? These are different prompting approaches. When you ask ChatGPT a question and it answers, that's called input-output prompting, I.O. Now, a lot of researchers and individual users have pointed out that you can get better results from LMs by using chain of thought prompting. An example of this might be thinking of three topics that you wanna speak about, then think through where each of those topics might lead, then select the best one, and then produce the actual words that you're gonna say. So same input, but then you're thinking about the possible topics, what kind of conversations those might produce, then selecting the best one, and then the actual output. This is the thinking before you say it part. Yet another way to produce even better results is something called self-consistency with COT, with chain of thought. So self-consistency is generating multiple results for each query and then seeing which results seem to appear the most, aka which ones are the most consistent. Combining self-consistency with chain of thought can lead to even better results than all the previous prompting methods. But what is even better than that? Well, Tree of Thoughts has the potential to be many times more powerful than the previous prompting methods. This approach works really well for LMs for more complex reasoning tasks. Here's the abstract from the paper. Language models are increasingly being deployed for general problem solving across a wide range of tasks, but are still confined to token level, left to right decision-making processes during inference. This means they can fall short in tasks that require exploration, strategic look ahead, or where initial decisions play a pivotal role. To surmount these challenges, we introduce tree of thoughts, which generalizes over the popular chain of thoughts approach. This allows the LM models self-evaluating choices to decide the next course of action, as well as looking ahead or backtracking when necessary to make global choices. And this significantly improves language models' problem-solving abilities on three tests that these researchers will test them on. And as you can see here, in one of the tests, GPT-4 with chain of thought prompting only solved 4% of the tasks. So chain of thought, that's, that's the next improved one. That's one step better than base level while their method achieved a success rate of 74%. That's a 10x improvement. In chain of thought, think of it as two things. So it's basically the breadth. It's so how many different scenarios it starts up with. And then the depth, which is how far down each scenario it thinks. The other key here is that it can look forward and backtrack and save information in various thoughts that can be used elsewhere. So how did they come up with this tree of thoughts? So they're referencing the work of Newell and Simon from 1972. They were pioneers in the field of AI. They studied how humans solve problems, proposing that our brains work like computers. We take in information, process it, and output solutions. Research on how humans solve problems indicates that people look through a large number of possible solutions. You can think of these solutions like a tree, where each point or node is a halfway solution and the connections or branches are actions that can change these halfway solutions. People decide which action to take based on guidelines or heuristics that help them navigate through all these possible solutions and guide them towards finding an answer. There are two shortcomings that our current prompting model has. One, locally, they do not explore different continuations within a thought process, aka the branches of the tree. And two, globally, they do not incorporate any type of planning, look ahead or backtracking to help evaluate these different options. 
To address these shortcomings, we introduce the Tree of Thoughts, a paradigm that allows LMs to explore multiple reasoning paths over thoughts. Now, this paper goes pretty deep into the math and specifics on how they did this. I won't go to all of that here, but I'll link the study in the show notes so you can peruse it at your leisure. But let's skip to the results. So the first thing they did was they made it play a game called 24, Game of 24. It's somewhat similar to Sudoku. So Game of 24 is a mathematical reasoning challenge where the goal is to use four numbers and basic arithmetic operations to obtain 24. So how they set it up is they took 1300, over 1300 games and they sorted it from easy to hard by human solving time. So they started with the standard input output IO and they prompted with five in context examples. They also did the chain of thought prompting and through each iteration, the language model is conditioned on all the previous history to reflect on your mistakes and generate a refined answer. If the output is incorrect, Note that it uses ground truth feedback signals about equation correctness. So ground truth is basically the real answers, the answers that we know to be correct for the AI to compare its results against. So in the tree of thoughts approach, the chat GPT is asked to think through all the possible combinations, and then they prompt that language model to evaluate each thought candidate as sure, maybe, or impossible with regard to it being able to reach 24, the answer we need. And then they perform a breadth first search in Tree of Thoughts, where at each step they keep the best five candidates. So in the breadth first approach, they expand the number of starting points before going deeper. Here in the results, the lowercase b here refers to breadth or how many columns wide they decide to go before digging deeper. And so here are the results. The basic input output IO prompt is 7.3. Chain of thought is 4%. Then they use the Oracle setup with K equals 100 samples. In simpler terms, they're testing how well this works by trying it many times up to 100 and then taking the best results to evaluate its performance in the most favorable conditions. So it's basically running it a bunch of times, seeing the best outputs. So that comes out with 9% success rate. Then we have our tree of thoughts with a breadth of one and the results are 45%. That's a massive leap. And then they run again with, again, B equals five, meaning so there's more starting points, five starting points that it thinks through. And the results go up to 74. So it's bigger by far than any of the other methods used. Even these three other methods here, where they rerun the results and pick the best of 100, for example. So tree of thought absolutely crushes everything else. Notice it's almost 10x, the results of just asking GPT-4 to solve the problem in one prompt. So this absolutely crushes game of 24. Next, we're going to look at creative writing. Is this approach better for creative writing? So next we invent a creative writing task where the input is four random sentences and the output should be a coherent passage with four paragraphs that end in the four input sentences respectively. So here's basically how that looks. So for example, it's given a task of write a coherent passage of four short paragraphs. The end sentence of each paragraph must be so, and this is the four, the four paragraphs that I randomly generated. One, it isn't difficult to do a handstand if you just stand on your hands. That's true. Two, it caught him off guard that space smelled of seared steak. Okay. Three, when she didn't like a guy who was trying to pick her up, she started using sign language. Four, each person who knows you has a different perception of who you are. So this would be kind of difficult to put together in a coherent storyline. And so it generates several plans and plan two, it's able to wrap it up and present it in a self-help context. So the handstand is part of self-help sort of as a metaphor for embracing challenges and astronauts embracing challenges, including the smell of space, then a woman's clever tactics. So again, challenges and contemplate how different perceptions of oneself can shape one's identity. That's pretty smart. I, I gotta, I gotta say. It connects the paragraphs with a theme of self-improvement and embracing challenges, making for a coherent passage. So it takes the inputs, it plans out multiple different plans that it can do. It votes on which plan is the best, and only then does it actually produce the final results. So as you can see here, the tree of thoughts is definitely the best one. It's a great improvement from the standard input output with chain of thought as sort of the halfway point. But if you're using sort of that refine function where you're basically asking it, okay, refine and make it better, refine and make it better, refine and make it better. 
over and over until it determines that it's perfectly coherent, well, then the input output method works, you know, almost as well, I would, I would say, as the tree of thought. And humans, of course, are grading tree of thought as the most coherent one. Next, we're looking at mini crosswords. So in Game of 24 and creative writing, TOT is relatively shallow and most three thought steps are needed to reach the final output. Here we explore five by five mini crosswords as a harder search problem involving natural language. So in the TOT setup, we leverage a depth first approach that keeps exploring the most promising subsequent word clue until this state is no longer promising, then backtrack to the parent state to explore alternate thoughts. So results as shown in table three, IO and COT prompting method Input, output, and chain of thought prompting methods perform poorly with a word level success rate less than 16%, while tree of thought significantly improves all metrics, achieving a word level success rate of 60% and solving four out of 20 games. And here's that table three, as you can see here, TOT again, absolutely crushes everything else. Next, they quickly dive into limitations. So search methods like TOT require more resources. So if you're on GPT-4 API, it's gonna cost more to run, you know, it's something that's like wide and deep. It's cheaper to do sampling methods in order to improve task performances, but the modular flexibility of TOT allows users to customize such performance trade-offs and ongoing open source efforts should readily reduce such costs in the near future. By the way, if you haven't heard how open source is absolutely rushing AI development, more so than the best funded companies on the planet, check out the We Have No Moat video. I'll link it in the top right of the screen or in the show notes down below. So this broader impact is very interesting to me. So the TOT is a framework that empowers LMs to more autonomously and intelligently make decisions and solve problems. While current tasks are limited to reasoning and search problems, future applications involving interactions with external environments or humans could bring potential danger e.g. facilitating harmful use of LMs. That is the warning. Like people might be able to extract much more power, much more intelligence out of this than we realize at this point. On the other hand, TOT also improves the interpretability of model decisions and the opportunity for human alignment as the resulting representations are readable, high level language reasoning instead of implicit low level token values. So that means that using these sort of chains and having it output its thoughts each time helps us better understand what it's thinking because we don't really know what it's thinking on the super deep level. When it spits something out, we don't fully understand how it comes to those decisions. But by sort of asking it to show its work, to spit out its reasoning in English or natural language at each step of the process allows us to kind of like see where it's going with this. And the conclusion is the associative system one of LMs can be beneficially augmented by a system two based on searching a tree of possible paths to the solution to a problem. What they're saying is that GPT-4, it's strong out of the box, but this way you can increase it even further just by asking it to look down multiple paths and see which solution lies at the end of which path. The tree of thoughts framework provides a way to translate classical insights about problem solving into actionable methods for contemporary LMs. I want to know what you think. Leave me a comment. If you want daily AI news, I have a free newsletter. It's at natural20.com. Check it out. And I hope to speak with you again.